it's been 19 years of, of starting from here and going here. So I spent 20 years of my life almost putting it together. And there's so many different things about this property that are unique and enjoyable. I think what I will miss the most is the freedom of having a property where you can just walk out your back door and just you know, be out in the middle of nowhere. The scenery's great. I mean, uh, we got a bass lake that you can go and relax and uh, you know, just kind of get lost and there's no traffic, there's no, you know, no noise. I don't know. It's going to be a lot that I'll miss. You know, per our survey, we're about 344 acres total. The deer breeding facility consists of about 16 acres that's, that's under fence. Uh, the rest of the property is, there's some pasture fencing uh, across the road. We've got 25 acres that's under pasture fence. On this side, we've got about 25 acres that's pasture fence where you can raise cattle. But everything on the property that one, at one point or another has been, been redone or touched and developed by us at, at, at some stage or another. been in the construction business in one way or another my whole life so this is like the fourth personal home I've built when I finally decided to build a home here I kind of took things I liked from previous homes and things I didn't like and kind of put all that together uh, into this home and we completed it about two years ago to me it's, it, it almost has a North Woods Lodge feel to it when you're inside it When you sit in count, we've got about nine other other buildings. Across the road, we've got a what we call the big barn. It's about 8,000 square foot structure. We have a kitchen, bathroom for people that work on the property and help us. So they've got a place where they can you know, kind of centralize every day. And then we've got a log cabin on the property that is uh, pretty much it's it's a home. And we've got a heated and cooled building down below. We use it as kind of like a storage hunting room facility. I had, uh, had a couple of buddies that had some high fence breeding facilities and I'd, I'd visited and went hunting on. So I thought that'd be a neat you know, business to get into. I visited a lot of different farms and kind of saw some of the positives and negatives of those and kind of integrated that into you know, what we've got now. Uh, we're trying, trying to centralize everything where everything is there around the barn. And what, what we do here is we try to keep everything clean, neat, organized, and uh, we, we tend to our deer. We feed our deer twice a day. I don't know if you'll ever find any deer breeders that do that. Uh, we want everything fresh and clean. Uh, you know, that translates into a healthy animal that's, you know, that's not stressed, so they're able to reach their, their maximum genetic potential. So we've got a 12-stall foam raising facility that's tailored to bottle raising foams, and then we've got a uh, deer handling facility that you can run your, your deer through and medicate them or for whatever needs that they have. So, you know, with the breeding stock that we have on the farm now, we average over 200 inches at two years old. That's what we're set up for. And uh, we had a particular buck named Zeus that uh, scored you know, almost 250 inches at one, and then he went to 370 at two, and then you know, he actually died at three, but he was mid 400s at, at three. We started uh, as we would add a parcel that was we would look for the best place to, to add a food plot instead of trying to remove existing trees we would look for a place where some of them areas had been logged in the past and they had cutting decks or power lines so we started tilling the soil improving it and trying to find the best thing to plant in this area and what we've what we focused on over the last four or five years I guess is, is clover and chicory we, we find that it it will last and give the deer you know, the forage they need and the protein they need. The 
yeah, it's called Janelia Lake. We built it about 10 years ago, and uh, the lake goes from 16 foot at its at the dam, and it gradually steps up to about a four foot, five foot depth at the upper end for, for spawning to create some different water temperatures. We stocked it with uh, Florida strain bass, just some bluegill and, and shell cracker and red ear sunfish. It's been, a, it's been a focal point for the property for sure. I think I'm just at a point where I just kind of want to do something different. I'm more of a builder and you know I've built it to the point to where you know now it's to the maintaining kind of stage so it's kind of like hey let somebody else take it enjoy it and you know, go build something different and I hope they'll enjoy it as much as we have like I said we've taken it from here to here and, you know uh, not that it needs to go any further but I hope that they get as much enjoyment out of developing it further as, as we have and just enjoying what we've the work we've put into it. I'd like to be able to, if, if someone buys it, to come back to it in a few years and visit and just see how much joy it's brought them.